Good. Uh, I believe we are we are uh, online now, and we should be able to start uh, this this presentation. My name is Svorak Stoltz. I am head of R&D at, at company Photoneo, and I'm very glad that uh, Mr. Schwetz, uh, the director of 3D sensing, can be with me here today to give you this presentation. Uh, well, uh, it's, it's, it's our pleasure to, to uh, be able to present to you our, our uh, 3D sensor portfolio. And uh, there is one thing that, that we would like to share with joy with you, uh, that is a brand new uh, award we have just received a couple of minutes ago for our Motion Cam 3D. So uh, I, I will start with the presentation now. Um, good. So first of all, for those who, who don't know Photoneo, uh, we are a, um, a company with about 150 employees. Uh, we have a broad network of distributors worldwide. Uh, we, we have four offices uh, all around the world. We have headquarters in uh, Slovakia in European Union. Uh, we have office in the United States uh, and, and also China. Uh, uh, we, we are a global provider of uh, robot vision and intelligence. Uh, this presentation will be focused on, on the robot vision uh, as we want to speak about two uh, 3D sensing technologies we are developing at Photoneo. Uh, so let me start with uh, giving you an idea about different methods and approaches that are in this in this domain in this field. Uh, so if we speak about about depth sensing technologies, uh, we have a broad range of methods from starting from 1D through 2D, 2, uh, 2 plus D, 2 and a half, D, 3D, 4D, 4 plus D. There is really large variety of, of methods that can deliver this type of data, uh, this type of information, but not all of them are actually applicable in the domain of, of robotics. In the domain of robotics, uh, we believe that there are basically three, uh, let's say, information domains that are, uh, that are relevant, perhaps. One, obviously, is a 2D domain, uh, which is very practical for planner application, for example, for, for um, seg uh, like, uh, segmentation, uh, localization of some, uh, I don't know, uh, planner parts on the conveyor belts, etc. But actually, this, this type of, of data doesn't give an information about, about how far the object is or what is the, uh, the true geometry of the scene. Uh, then there is, uh, of course, 3D information that, that gives uh, additional additional uh, information about the distance of the object or about the 3D structure. But uh, then usually sensors uh, have just one perspective. And uh, obviously this is, this is good for 3D aware applications, but uh, one doesn't really have chance to see behind the corners or what is, uh, like if there are some uh, concave parts or, or, or more complex geometries, uh, these uh, 3D sensors of this, this type don't provide this information. And then on top of it, that, uh, uh, we have a full 3D uh, data stream that, that uh, uses multiple perspectives and already gives or fuses these multiple perspectives together in order to give a more complete or, or so to say complete information about the 3D uh, structure of the scene. Uh, we believe that for most applications in robotics, 3D uh, information, so the let's say the middle column is sufficient, but of course we are able uh, to provide with our sensors also, also the 3D, full 3D information if that is necessary for specific applications. Good. Uh, if we speak about uh, 3D sensing in robotics, in robot vision, uh, we believe that there are, there are uh, some attributes more relevant than other attributes. Uh, one attribute, of, of course, is uh, the quality uh, of, the, of the 3D information that is provided by the sensor. And then there is a speed as another attribute. Uh, up to now, I mean, if you look at this at this tree, uh, there is uh, there are two main branches: passive systems and active systems. Uh, this differentiation comes from either uh, using or not using active illumination 
in order to get the 3D information. Uh, in the domain of passive system, we have passive stereo, very commonly used, but uh, we believe this is not sufficiently reliable for, for being routinely deployed in the, in the industrial environments. Uh, then we have a broad class of active methods. In there, we have, we have those that use triangulation and those that don't use triangulation approach. From the most, uh, uh, let's say, popular in the domain that doesn't use triangulation, I would, I would mention just for example, time of flight approaches. Uh, then from triangulation, we have active stereo structured light and, and then uh, the latest development that is that comes from, from our company is a technology that is called parallel structured light. So up to now, I wanted to say, uh, the, the, let's say that this, uh, this portfolio, this, this uh, range of methods was limited to uh, time of flight, active stereo, and structured light. These three approaches were either good in uh, speed or they excelled in, in uh, 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 accuracy or quality of the data. But with each deployment, one had to do certain compromise or had to decide between either go fast or get accurate result, but then doing compromises on the, uh, on the, on, on, on the deployment itself, on how the, I don't know, the production line or the inspection system would be constructed. With parallel structured light, uh, this is no longer true. One can get speed and accuracy at the same time. Uh, uh, products of the PhotoNeo are uh, within these the last, last two uh, types of methods. Uh, Foxy 3D scanner family uh, comes from structured light domain and motion cam, brand new motion cam 3D uh, is, uh, comes from parallel structured light. As for the principles of these methods, probably most of you know how the time of flight works. Uh, there is an active illumination that basically make a very short or a sequence of short impulses. And then the time of, of how, how long, uh, how much time does it take for light to travel and bounce back from the object is calculated with a specially designed sensor. These methods are good in speed, but they do not deliver very good or often sufficiently good uh, data quality. Uh, the same applies for active stereo. Uh, over there, the correspondence analysis is used for, for, for deriving the 3D depth. Uh, again, speed is very good. One can get a 3D information from single snapshot. So in principle, one can do a 3D video. But but uh, the quality doesn't doesn't is not sufficient. And then there is a structured light uh, which uh, works uh, or exploits the the principle of projecting different binary or not necessary binary codes onto onto a scene and then uh, interpreting these codes uh, with a camera that. Uh, is is uh, located uh, in a I mean with a certain uh, baseline away from the projector unit uh, can be used for for uh, estimating the depth for each each uh, image location and this is perfect this is very good approach for for getting a high quality 3D data but uh, it is uh, when the scene is is not uh, static. How, uh, what you can see in this example, uh, it cannot uh, obtain a sufficient data quality because actually these codes do not add up in, uh, in a proper um, integrity and, and therefore the 3D estimate is no longer valid. Uh, uh, at this point, I would like to maybe give you a brief, let's say, feeling about the parallel structured light approach that has been developed by, by PhotoNeo. Uh, we have, uh, we came up, we developed and patented a very special uh, CMOS sensor technology that uh, is capable of running structured light approach in parallel, in a single exposure. It is based on, on a special uh, exposure uh, mechanism that is implemented in the CMOS sensor that actually makes our camera uh, working as if there were multiple specially uh, operated cameras in one body. 
And we have used this specially designed and developed sensor for 3D sensing, but actually it has very broad field of application, ranging from HDR video through motion tracking, image deep learning, compressive sensing, etc. So there are many applications that we have not yet explored with this sensor and that we are devoted to try in the future. Uh, here, I'd like to give you an idea about the quality of the 3D information coming from active stereo and time of flight. Uh, at these videos, we have a, a let's say, a hospital scene uh, with a patient, uh, and one can clearly see that uh, the point cloud is not really, uh, let's say, good quality or sufficient with a sufficient quality. Uh, for the comparison, this is the stream that comes from from Motion Cam 3D that has been released just just. Uh, recently, just two weeks ago, and as a, as a standard product of Photonio. And uh, we have just received the IERA award uh, 20 minutes ago. Uh, fine. As for the feature balance of our sensors, uh, I, would, I don't want to go into much detail here, but uh, one can see that uh, for, as for the three, uh, Foxy 3D scanner, uh, all the features are nicely rounded up and, and it's a well-balanced system that is that provides very good uh, quality, data quality, but, but actually it, it is bound to, uh, let's say, be poorer if uh, one has to deal with dynamic scenes. Uh, on the other hand, Motion Cam 3D uh, can fill up this gap and be excel also or provide a sufficiently good quality data even if the, the, the scene is moving. Uh, as for the key features of these two sensors, uh, we have very rugged or specially designed rugged body, robust scanning performance, uh, resistance against uh, temp different temperatures, it's temperature calibrated, it's IP65, uh, prove, uh, proven, uh, it has very good accuracy uh, and large scanning ranges, POI interface, plug and play, and etc. etc. As for the working ranges of, of these two uh, product families, we have designed them in such a way that uh, it can it can uh, basically be operated and used in in almost all. Um, fields in the domain of logistics and robotics. Uh, we are not covering very large operation ranges uh, for some technical reasons, but, but for uh, the remaining applications, uh, Foxy scanners and motion cam 3D cameras can be uh, deployed without any problems. And at this point, I would like to uh, pass my word to uh, Mr. Schwetz, who is director of 3D. So. Uh, thank you, Surat. Uh, I would like to sh demonstrate uh, the performance of these devices or, or give you uh, a good idea about like what are their actual benefits uh, for, for the applications. Uh, so I have a collection of applications to, to show you and, and demonstrate what everything you can do with uh, such a 3D uh, sensing devices or robotic eyes. Uh, I will start with an application which is called depolitization. Uh, what is uh, this application about. So uh, you have uh, usually a very uh, big uh, stack of boxes on the pallet, uh, and the goal is to, to pick them robotically to, uh, to some other place. And for this to, to happen, you need to solve several uh, challenges. Uh, usually uh, because uh, like the robot uh, is also big, it needs its operating space, uh, you need to have uh, a scanning device high above uh, the pallet itself. That's why you don't see it on, on this uh, movie. And uh, on the other side, so the scanning device is far away, but you need to recognize very uh, fine detail. Imagine the, the boxes on the uh, lowest uh, layer. Uh, they are usually very close to each other. So you need to recognize the edges of the boxes. But the, what is also uh, very interesting is that the boxes, they don't have uh, the same shape. They have different shape, they have different colors, different materials, they can have a uh, deformations. And uh, that's why uh, to, to make this application happen, uh, artificial intelligence algorithms were uh, deployed, uh, but they were able to 
to work just thanks to the high uh, resolution and, and quality of the data provided by uh, Foxy 3D sensor. Um, the next application uh, is uh, very similar in nature, uh, but is not based on AI. Uh, but but you know beforehand what kind of object you will be picking. So uh, in this case, it's small metallic cylinder. You have a CAD model of it, and you use the vision system to to scan the parts and recognize them. And if you would have a closer look, uh, so you can see that on one side the bin is very large. There are several thousands of parts like this. Uh, the and they are shiny and very thin uh, as well. Uh, so, so again, you really need to have a high resolution and high quality reconstruction. Uh, and also the scanning and all the algorithms have to be very fast. In this case, the cycle time was uh, seven seconds. Uh, we also have, uh, as, 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 as we said, now we are demonstrating the, uh, the vision part or the robotic eyes, but for this application, we have a whole solution, including the, the intelligence behind that. Uh, the, this is a custom application I would like to show you now. Uh, it's a handling of big furniture boards for uh, prominent uh, furniture manufacturer. Uh, and the goal here is that you have a big uh, uh, board so for wardrobes or, or similar, and uh, they are stacked uh, on, on uh, in, a, in a like uh, a pallet as well. And the goal is to to de again depalletize this, but with, with a high accuracy. Uh, so here uh, there was a combination of two sensors uh, used. One is high uh, above its XL model. And uh, this serves for preliminary uh, localization for robots to grip the part uh, with the with the big gripper uh, with the vacuums, and then uh, because uh, because of the size of the system and the delicacy that needs to be uh, achieved, there is another uh, vision sensor on the gripper itself, uh, which scans during the motion and and provides the additional like fine tuning of the accuracy because the placement of such uh, this board can have more than uh, two meters and has to be placed within the accuracy of uh, below two millimeters. So, so you really need to deploy uh, additional fine tuning. Uh, and, and what is like also uh, interesting about this application that there is a strong ambient light and all this need to happen in uh, six second cycle time. Uh, so these three applications were from, from the field of, of vision guidance directly. Uh, I have a few more. So uh, this one uh, application is a uh, uh, robotic shrouding of the uh, ladle to the collector nozzle. So there is a big uh, container of iron liquid. Uh, and there, uh, this container has uh, a ladle uh, nozzle uh, in the bottom. And uh, the goal is to robotically bring the the the, the ladle and uh, pour out the iron. Uh, and what is interesting that the scan that this is really in extreme temperatures. There was a special uh, casing uh, designed for for uh, for the device, uh, which opens the device does its scan from more than four meters. Uh, it it's able from this distance to localize the very hot and and shining. Uh, nozzle uh, for, for robots to, to guide the ladle uh, to it. Uh, so this, this is basically to, to demonstrate like the performance of, of the system. Uh, what are like uh, really applications from, from different field is for example, this outdoor scanning of uh, wheat field, uh, where, which is used for recognizing the, uh, the quality uh, of the of the field and the fertility, uh, and uh, so, so so what you need for such a system is a large scanning volume, and what is very practical is the speed of the system uh, itself. That you can imagine that the field is very big, so you need a system which is able to acquire uh, large areas at high quality. Uh, by high quality, I mean a very really sub millimeter accuracy, uh, very fast. 
Mm, a similar application to this is, for example, inspection, but uh, by inspection, it, we don't need necessarily to think about like manufacturing inspections uh, in, in the sense of 100 quality control, uh, but also uh, inspection when, when the device is actually mounted on the vehicle uh, to, to check the post-construction quality of the building, to search for unevenness, cracks, uh, and sim similar uh, quality issues uh, in the building. Uh, so, so to be able to deploy applications like this, you also need a very good uh, body factor, lightweight device, which is uh, uh, very efficient on the power uh, and is able to, to work in a uh, dusty environment uh, with the ambient light and still provides you with a, with a very good quality. If you would mount a motion cam over here, you can do all this scanning in motion uh because motion cam uh, is able to scan in, in very rapid motion up to 40 meters uh, the object or the device itself can uh, the theoretical limit is uh, about 40 meters per scan uh, of the motion uh, without compromising the quality of the scan uh, speaking about scanning in motion uh, you uh, certainly uh, uh, have met with the applications where the device itself is mounted on the robot, uh, so-called hand-eye approach. Uh, so in this case, what is the situation or what was the situation before the releasing of motion cam is that uh, any device you would uh, have on the robot, you would need to stop, uh, wait uh, for, for the system to stabilize and then make a scan because you need to avoid any vibration or, or movement to achieve high quality scan. Uh, what is perfect about motion cam is that this is no longer true. You can mount the device on the robot and do a high quality scan directly in the motion without any motion blur or negative artifacts. Speaking about scanning in motion, so it's not only that the uh, device uh, is in the movement, but uh, when we have, for example, a use case of collaborative robotics, so the true collaboration uh, in my eyes is when the robot actually, uh, when the person actually handovers some object to the robot. So, so for this uh, use case, uh, the robot would need to see the human eye or the uh, human hand all the time to be able to, to grasp the object. And this is uh, again possible with motion cam. And the third scenario is that uh, the sensor might be static, the robot might be static, but actually the, the object is moving. And the situation here you, you see, you, you probably know this from the 2D world, uh, where, for example, there are some cookies being placed in some box. Uh, in this case, you see uh, boxes uh, which are being placed in big box. Uh, what is the main difference is that these objects have a different height so you really need to, to have a 3d system and 2d system is not sufficient uh yeah that i i would conclude with this that uh, this actually the the whole world is in motion uh so so that's uh, the reason why motion cam uh was awarded by uh, this is this was actually the third uh, award from this this time from from robotic community. So, but there is much more application elsewhere to to look for, forward to to automate. Good, uh, thank you, Marcel. Uh, I'll try to conclude quickly. Uh, what what we wanted to convey to you uh, in this in this presentation. Uh, well, we believe that that Photoneo 3D sensors are highly suitable for robotic vision and it is because they are either it is Foxy 3D scanner or motion cam uh, because they actually uh, can provide simple solutions to really hard problems and especially speaking about motion cam it, it is really uh, making possible things that were not possible a few months ago I would say or even weeks ago and uh, once you have it in your hand, you will see that actually you no longer need to care about many nuisances and, and problems that, that that used to be used to exist in the past. And but in general, speaking about our our products, our three sensors, we believe that that it is the uh, the, the the ranges and the large and practical scanning volumes that make it applicable. Uh, that it is the lightweight and durable body. It is the high accuracy and level of detail for the you know, in the given uh, application, 
uh, it is the robust scanning performance and ease of use that makes it actually usable and useful for, for you and, and for your applications. And uh, in this period, I would like to uh, encourage you uh, to enter the era of smart automation with our our uh, solutions. And here, I would like to point out that we have not we are not developing only 3D sensors, but we are developing the entire ecosystem around those sensors. Uh, an ecosystem means that we also add uh, uh, robotic intelligence to this vision to these vision systems and. Uh, or using these vision systems and these applications and, and ecosystem include, for example, solutions for random uh, piece or belt picking or universal depalitization, packaging, sorting, bin picking, and many more. So uh, if you have any questions or, or anything that, that needs to be clarified, uh, feel free to contact us at these addresses or if you were interested in, in prizes of these sensors, feel free to contact us. Thank you very much for your attention. So we are just waiting no, for the next no, no, presenter no, to come on stage. There he is, Mr. Alboni. Enjoy. My name is Andrea Alboni. I am Regional Sales Director for Universal Robot in Munich, Germany. And today I would like to take you through uh, our world and the world of Universal Robot and Universal Robot Plus. Are you, you, screen, you see my screen correctly? It's perfect. Yes, UR Plus application kits, removing barriers for industrial automation. As I said, my name is Andrea Alboni. I'm working here in, uh, in Munich for Universal Robots. We are here since uh, years now. Is, uh, Germany is one of the main markets in, uh, for the industry, for robotics, and of course, also for your Universal Robots. Today, as I said, I would like to talk a little bit about our UR Plus ecosphere, ecosystem, uh, what it is, how does it work, why we uh, decided to uh, develop this kind of project. But first of all, before we go to the UR Plus, I would like to do one step back. And why do I have this picture? This picture represents the core of the philosophy and the vision of Universal Robot. Uh, why a, a kit? Because a couple of years ago, we are now 15 years old. So 15 years ago, uh, three guys from the University of Odense, uh, they wanted to uh, cover uh, an application, to do an application, a simple pick and place application with a robot. Uh, and they uh, start thinking and asking themselves why so many other hardware um, technology applications in the world uh, increased and imp improved in the usability during the 20, 30 years before. And this dynamic didn't uh, take place uh, for robotics. So wh why was it so difficult to program a robot, even if only for a simple, for a simple task? So the vision was uh, a solution, a technology, a robot that could be programmed and used also by a kid. And these, of course, children are not our, our main target group. Uh, but of course, this vision permits us to go in a certain kind of target group of, of industries and, uh, and companies that before us, before lightweight robotics and cooperative robotics, they wouldn't have the possibility to enjoy the advantages of robotics and automation. So with this vision in, uh, in our head, we always say that no company is too small or too large for automati automatization. So our robotic solution are offered to industries in every kind of uh, market segment, every kind of, uh, um, of dimension, of course, uh, of the company. So that the robots are not uh, now or not anymore only for the uh, Volkswagens and Siemens of the, of the world, but for almost every company uh, on the market. Why is it possible? Because basically 
the robot or robot arm is an extremely flexible tool. So we give a competitive advantage to our customer because the flexibility of the robot can be covered by many different end of arm tools. So why did we decide to invest in, in Universal Robot Plus in this ecosystem? We always do the comparison with a smartphone. Of course, a smartphone can, uh, can permit you to talk, to, to call people. And this is, a, let's say, the, the core specification, the core task of a telephone. But nowadays, a telephone that only calls and permits you to call is almost um, not thinkable, is not imaginable. So we have for our robot the same kind of ecosystem as other uh, companies like Apple or, or Google have with apps. So a phone without apps would cover only maybe 1% or 5% of the tasks that you would like to have with a, with a, with a smartphone. And the same thing is Universal Robot Plus for our robot arms. So we come back to what is Universal Robot Plus? Universal Robot Plus is an ecosystem, as said, where the robot goes in the background. The robot is, of course, important as a base for an application. But in order to provide an application to our customers, then we need something more. We need something else in the front end. Because at the end of the day, the robot arm is only an enabler. We enable a solution. But the customer doesn't want the robot. They, doesn't want, they don't want a robot, they don't want a camera, they don't want a gripper, they don't want, they want a solution. They want to find a solution for a problem, to, every, to, to cover a task, to uh, enable something in a production area. So the Universal Robot, Robot Plus, as I said, is an ecosystem of very different end of arm tooling or accessories for our robot arm. Is it, you see here just a, a, a small snapshot of what we have, and we want to give an idea of the different kinds of accessories. There are grippers, of course, very different kind of grippers. There are cameras, there are different sensors. There are uh, seven axes, uh, horizontal and vertical. And of course, not only uh, hardware, but also software. Here, for example, we have a solution from Rocket Farm a company from uh, Norway, a really innovative company from Norway, and they offer a gateway for the robot to communicate under the OPC UA uh, protocol. So not only hardware, but also, also software. So the concept is we want to achieve the dream of the plug and produce. Plug and produce. So no big ha uh, hassle about different, let's say, connecting different components and trying to coordinate them. We want really to speed up the, the, the process between decision and implementation of an application. And as said, the year plus, they, we offer components like vision accessories, grippers, of course, but also year plus application kits. And the application kits are basically the next step in the development of the year plus platform. Just to give you an idea of the platform and the ecosystem, uh, the UR Plus ecosystem at the moment um, includes about 250, more than 250 products certified by Universal Robot. We have 3,800 developers that are working on the development forum. They're exchanging experiences and uh, suggestions how to include more products into this ecosystem. We are over 260 other products in the pipeline. 230 partners, external partners, your plus partners in the EMEA region, and more than 450 worldwide. And this ecosystem, this, um, I say ecosystem for products, but also for developers and, and partners is always growing. Always growing means also for us, give the opportunity to our customer to have their own tailor-made solution within this ecosystem. How does it work? What we want to achieve is, as said, a um, limitation of problems and basically the, 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 in between robots and different um, tools. So what we do is a certification uh, for grippers, for vision system, and all the uh, accessories in order to have a clear and communication between the robot and 
the external, external tool. This is important in order to have no problems in the implementation of the application uh, by the end user or by the system integrator. This is a, a showroom. So we want to give visibility to our ER Plus partners. And then, of course, system integrators, distributors, and end user are free to choose which is the right product for their own application. So what we say is that the ER Plus uh, certificate is a seal of confidence because we know that different tools can work properly with the, the robot arm. I don't want to go through all the names that you've, you see in, uh, um, on this slide because they would be too much. But of course, you see here very different uh, kind of companies that are part of the Europe Plus ecosystem, of the Europe Plus uh, family. We have big companies, smaller companies, software houses, hardware companies, so really different. And everyone can apply to, certi to, to certify their own product within our um, Partner, our platform. We have one common goal and is to enable an individual COVID solution. Guaranteed to fit means that everything should be working with the other, other components in an easy way. And enable the do-it-yourself. Do it yourself for the end user or a simple integration for the system integrators. I have here a couple of uh, um, a, a couple of examples. An example here is from Schmalz, uh, a vacuum gripper with the, the UR cap, so the, the driver, the software that enables the communication between the end of arm tooling, in this case the gripper, and uh, our uh, polyscope. And you see here basically on the polyscope uh, user interface the possibility to uh, manage all the, the um, actions that you can have with the, uh, the gripper. As said, there is a next step that we did this year. We presented in March 2020. It was not the proper time probably to launch something new, but uh, the feedback that we had from the market was extremely good, extremely positive, and it was the ER Plus application kit. It means that we, want to, we, we came many years ago on the market with the robot arm, then came the end of arm tooling, then came the certification of the communication between end of arm tooling and or other components with the robot arm. And then the next step in order to uh, provide ease of use and ease of implementation of the application for the customer are the Euro Plus application kits. We have very different kinds of application kits divided in categories between vision or between also uh, handling. So we have palletizing solution, we have screw driving solution, we have a dispensing solution for gluing, uh, we have solutions also for welding, so really different, and also for education. Uh, I want to gi give you an idea of what does it mean to have uh, to buy a Euro Plus application kit. Here I have an example from the company Robotic, a company from Canada. They presented this solution a couple of weeks ago, I think one month ago, more or less. And uh, if you buy this Euro Plus application get kit, you get a Euro cap, means, as said, the communication protocols between uh, the, um, the robot arm and the, the external parts. You get the seven axes, you get the pellet and box sensors, range extension, the vacuum gripper, the hair hoses, everything that you need, and the software, everything that you need to basically uh, organize a polytizing solution. Here I have also a quick video. Uh, also here, also the communication for robotic goes in a direction to make understand the customer that we want to low down the barriers for the end users and for system integrators in order to have standardized solutions that work properly and that can fulfill the expectations of our customers. We have all the software in order to organize the pellets and organize the boxes in a well-known easy programming um, user interface. Here another another solution from our partner from Munich, uh, Robomind. This is a, uh, what they call Robobrain, is a solution system with a vision camera 2D and 3D. And also here, the same concept, you have different components that enable you uh, a easy integration of the robot with other components in order to reach 
also here uh, a more complex application like bin picking. I have another one. Uh, I can go forward for, uh, I think, two days. I just want to give you a, a snapshot of our possibilities and what we find, what you find today on the website. This is another one. This is uh, uh, from Stöger Automation, also from uh, uh, from Bavaria, for, from Germany. Uh, you have the UR cap, you have uh, uh, the, the tool changer kit, the screwdriver, and you have all the accessories that you need in order to organize a screw diving application. Also here, a quick video. I said I could go, uh, I think, uh, um, further with uh, many other different uh, Europlus application kits. Uh, we have, I don't want to say every day, but pretty regularly new Europlus application kits. Uh, coming on uh, on the website uh, because also the Euro Plus partners recognize the need of not giving only components but giving complete solution. We are well known because we address mainly small and medium enterprises, so not um, companies with uh, huge knowledge in robotic programming and uh, and up in robotic applications. So we try to give them a plug and produce kit in order to enable them to profit. Uh, from the advantages of robotics and uh, uh, automation. You see here, again, Robotik uh, with uh, another solution, Schmalz also with a beam picking solution, FSK, um, partner from, uh, um, from Germany for a welding solution, and New Scale Robotics from the US for a quality control uh, solution. As last but not least, uh, this is just a picture of uh, uh, UR Global, we have our headquarter in Denmark, in Odense, uh, where the, uh, the company was established. Uh, we have uh, different uh, subsidiaries all around the world, and we are active in order to uh, increase the number of distribution partners all around the world to cover completely all the markets. Thank you very much. Please, please, this was just a, a snapshot. This was just an introduction uh, into our world. Uh, we will be, of course, more than happy to support you with uh, your project, your application, applications in, in robotics and in lightweight robotics and collaborative robotics. So please feel free to, to get in touch. Thank you very much.